Oh yeah, that's right, baby. We are about to take a look back at possibly the greatest Terminator movie of all time. Let's do this. If you smile, what J Rock is cooking. Finally, J-Rock has come back to you too. What is happening with the millions of J-Rock's fans all over the world? J-Rock came across this channel. The name of this channel is called Film Comics Explained. J-Rock came across this channel, and he likes it. Oh, J-Rock likes it a lot. What is this channel about? You may be asking, okay, basically what this channel does is the narrator is he goes in and he explains different movies and video games and characters and certain things, and he dives into it and he takes a deeper dive into it. And he narrates it and it explains to you in a way that J-Rock appreciates. J-Rock says, take your monkey asses over there to his channel. And subscribe to him. The link to his channel will be in the description box below. Go over there and check out his channel. A lot of cool videos. But right now, seeing as how we got a new Terminator movie about to release here in the next few weeks, we're going to check out possibly the best Terminator movie of all time. That's right. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. We're about to dive in and take a look back at the T-1000. What could it do? What did it do? How it laid the smack down on all their candy asses. Let's take a look at this, shall we? Let's do this. One of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. Woo! We're sitting there thinking, how hey the heck guys, you kill this happening? thing? Neat here with Film and Comics Explained. And today, we'll be exploring the T-1000 as featured in James Cameron's sci-fi masterpiece, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. The T-1000, also known as the Prototype Series 1000 Terminator, is a fictional character in the Terminator franchise. Essentially an android shapeshifting assassin, the mm. T-1000 is the main antagonist of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and a minor antagonist in Terminator Genesis, which we will ignore since it decided to ignore what had come before it. Created right. by the franchise's main antagonist, Skynet, which was a machine artificial intelligence that directed its robotic creations against the human resistance in an all-out war, the T-1000 is described in Terminator 2 as being composed of a liquid metal mimetic polyalo that it could manipulate to assume various forms. Mm. I talk about both Skynet and the T-800 in other videos, which I'll leave links to below, and I highly recommend that you guys check them out. Aside from being able to camouflage itself by assuming the appearance of nondescript objects and the likeness of other humans had terminated in pursuit of its goals, the T-1000 shape-shifting abilities enabled it to form its hands into stabbing blades, slip through physical openings by oozing its liquid form, and instantly reform itself from any physical damage. In the prologue of the film's novelization, it's further explained that the T-1000 was created through nanotechnology and was essentially a nanomorph able to scan the molecular structure of whatever it's touching before successfully mimicking its visual appearance. Woo! Man, this was one of my favorite movies ever. Terminator 2, baby. Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the T-1000's default form is portrayed by the legendary Robert Patrick, while other actors portray the T-1000 in the disguises of specific characters. The infiltration unit was described as a technological leap of the 800 series Terminator, with the T-800 explaining that the T-1000 was a more advanced killing machine. 
As mentioned before, it could use its ability to quickly liquefy and assume forms in innovative and surprising ways, including fitting through narrow openings, morphing its arms into solid metal tools or bladed weapons, walking through prison bars, flattening itself and imitating the pattern and texture of the ground to hide or ambush its targets. The T-1000 had the ability to extrude small, simple items from itself. For example, it created a motorcycle helmet and sunglasses when these items were necessary for its disguise. It could also change its surface color and texture to convincingly simulate flesh, clothing, and other non-metallic materials. Wolfie, I can hear him barking. Is he okay? Wolfie's fine, honey. Wolfie's just fine. Where are you? Most the parents are dead. The T-1000 was capable of accurately mimicking voices as well, including the ability to extrapolate a relatively small voice sample to generate a wide array of words or inflections as required. However, its morphing abilities were limited by complexity, mass, and volume. And as such, it could not transform into complex machines with mechanical moving parts or chemical weapons. fuels like guns or bombs. Its volume also prevented it from taking the form of small objects like a pack of cigarettes, although it was capable of impersonating larger people, most likely by simply making its interior hollow rather than remaining a solid mass. Like all the Terminators featured in the series, the T-1000 possessed superhuman strength. While relatively equal in strength to the T-800, thanks to its morphing abilities and immunity to mechanical damage, it is shown to be capable of overpowering the T-800 in hand-to-hand -hand combat, despite its more slender frame and lack of mass compared to its predecessor. It can also run fast enough to catch up to a car accelerating away from it, though it was more than capable of commandeering vehicles when required. Hell with my thing right there. You okay? Fine. Say, that's a nice bike. The T-1000 yeah. is effectively impervious to physical injury, and any damage done to its body would only momentarily stagger it for as long as it took to repair the wound or deformation. Bullet wounds were a minor inconvenience. However, a high kinetic impact from a shotgun blast or a large explosion would knock it out for it right there. before it could recover. If part of its body is detached, it will liquefy and flow back into the T-1000's body, with its detached nanoparts being able to track the core of the body from a great distance. In the prologue to the novel adaptation of the film, it's explained that the T-1000 was able to completely reform and reshape Get itself out. Well, due to its cells having been programmed by Skynet with onboard nanotechnologies. I thought it was interesting to note that the T-1000 was actually not specifically designed to encounter other Terminators and had little knowledge of their diagnostics, and this is what allowed the T-800 to take it by surprise. Ah. In the film, the T-1000 forcefully shut the T-800 down, but did not know of the older model's emergency reboot power mode, which enabled it to get back up. The T-1000's weaknesses appeared to be extreme temperatures, similar to those that would have been used during its creation. In the film, when it was frozen solid from a coating of liquid nitrogen, it could not move. It was then shot by the Terminator and split into several pieces. However, the heat from a nearby crucible More thawed out several. the individual pieces, allowing it to liquefy moments before the T-1000 began reforming its body. After it was hit with a grenade launcher, nuts. it was so distorted and off balance from the gap in its torso that it slipped and fell into a molten steel vat, which caused it to shapeshift uncontrollably into its human victims. The machine was then seen turning itself inside out to try and shield itself from the molten steel. However, it was permanently destroyed when the searing heat disassembled its nanotechnological cells on a microscopic level. The extended edition of Judgment Day also contained additional scenes in the steel foundry, showing that the damaging effects of being frozen, shattered, and thawed caused the T-1000 to glitch, and as a result, the assassin began to uncontrollably morph, Can matching its surface it? with objects it came into contact with against its will. It's also because of this glitch that John Connor was able to see through its ruse when it impersonated his mother, as its feet took on the color and texture of the great- I didn't Apple know that! Star. The DVD also contains a deleted scene where the T-1000 used its hands to scan John Connor's bedroom for genetic and physiological information, an ability it had in common with the TX scene in Terminator 3, Rise of Machines. I gotta start looking at deleted scenes and stuff, bro. I don't even look at that. As stated above, the film's novelization explained this feature by expanding on the origins of the T-1000, where it's explained that the machine was able to use nanotechnology to scan the basic molecular structure of objects it came into contact with, both living and inanimate.
legal guardian of John and Connor. That's right, officer. What's he done now? Could I speak with him, please? I could if you were here. There was a guy here this morning looking for him, too. Yeah, big guy on a bike. Does that got something to do with this? No. I wouldn't worry about him. Thanks for your cooperation. Got some ears on him, don't he? Based on what we see in the film, the T-1000 series were subtle infiltrators as they often accomplished their goals through cunning and deception instead of the brute force and extreme violence used by the T-800s. For example, right. in Terminator 2, it disguised itself as a police officer to gain trust and access information, and its benign, friendly appearance enabled it to gain the information it needed to locate John Connor. It also imitated family members of its human target to gain the person's confidence. In fact, the T-1000 was one of the most efficient infiltrator units as it was able to successfully pass as a human using a large repertoire of emotional expressions and interpersonal skills that the earlier Terminators lacked. See that guy over there? That's a smile. Okay. You could practice in front of a mirror or something. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the T-1000. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Vista, baby. Yeah. J Rock likes that. Oh, yeah, J Rock likes that a lot. Oh, yeah. Love how he explained that. Love how he went to the details and, yo. I didn't see that part where the T uh, T1000 froze, his hand froze from grabbing that bar, and he was glitched. I didn't see that. I, now I didn't watch the deleted scenes, okay? But I ain't see that. And the other parts we were scanning the room, I ain't see that either. I didn't watch the deleted scenes. I figured there's a reason they're deleted, so why watch them? But obviously, it has a lot of information. And I didn't see the part where his feet mimicked the floor when he was impersonating Sarah. I didn't see that part either. Man, I'm, try, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to when I first saw the movie in theaters, when it first came out uh, back in the 90s. And I was like, bro, this movie was the bomb right here, man. Because you had the, 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 the T-1000. We didn't know it could do all that. We didn't know it could mimic and, and, and repair itself and all that stuff. And when I saw it for the first time, I remember being in the theater when I was watching it. I remember when after he shot it, it was laying down in a CGI show. It, re, it was repairing itself. Everybody was like, yo, you know, oohs and ahs. Everybody was like, the hell? And then when they was in the hospital, when he went to go get Sarah, come with me if you want to live. And then it liquefied itself through the uh, through the bars. Everybody was like, everybody, it was like time stood still. It was like, okay, what? Uh, and then they got off to the races, and then you you hear the music in the background. Man, that was this is in my opinion, hands down. The best Terminator movie of all time. Better than the first one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. However many more they're gonna do. Alright? Better than all of them. Now I don't now, so far, I haven't seen the new one. Uh Terminator was it Fate something? Dark Faders, I think that's what it's called. I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, but it's gonna have it's gonna have a uh, a lot to live up to when it comes to the uh, the T one thousand.
It's going to have a lot to do, uh, live up to with the, the Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Because this movie was the bomb. Big it. And so, anyway. j -Rock really likes his channel. Again, the link to this channel will be in the description box below. Uh, so make sure you go over and describe, uh, subscribe to this channel. He has a lot of things on here. Um, he goes in the Skynet. I may do a video on that one. Skynet. Uh, Terminator Explored. Uh, he goes into our robot. He goes into the Predators and the Alien uh, series and how those were all shot. Um, he goes into video games like Kratos and Resident Evil and The Last of Us. Um, man, just a lot of different things, different movies and characters that he goes into. So make sure you all go there and check him out. Tell him J-Rock, the great one, the YouTube people's champion, the most electrifying YouTuber. And all of YouTube and entertainment. Alright? Make sure you tell them that J Rock sent you. And um, if you appreciate it and like J Rock's reaction to this, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe and you share. Alright? Also, uh, J Rock is trying to get to 1 million subscribers. So make sure you share this video with the millions and millions of your fans. Alright? And also, be sure to hit that bell so that you can be notified that, oh, it is time. To be electrified. Until next time. If you smile, wow, what J Rock is cooking.